Well, contrary to the message that we've been given from a very young age, cow's milk is not a guarantee of protection from bone fracture. And when you look around the world at the epidemiology, it becomes really clear that in fact, it's the populations where the most milk and the most calcium is consumed that we see the highest risk of fracture. And in whitewash, I explain in detail why that is, but also how we can change our risk and very specific lifestyle strategies that every one of us can take to reduce our risk and increase bone density and minimize the chance that we'll ever suffer a bone fracture in our life. I think for the average person, it can be challenging initially to accept the idea that something they've taken for granted that almost has taken a place of being sacred, you know, in our culture, uh, may not actually produce the, the results that they've been promised, meaning, uh, you know, protect them from bone fracture. But I have found that almost invariably when people see the science, when they see the overwhelming evidence that cow's milk is loaded with toxins that are very dangerous, environmental contaminants, and actually um, powerful growth hormones and such that may elevate our risk for disease, that they become convinced that this really is not something that we should be consuming. It's always surprising uh, to people to learn that when you look around the world, it's actually the very countries that are consuming the most milk and consuming the most calcium in their diet who have the highest risk of developing a bone fracture. So that would be like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, North America, the Western European nations. That's where we see all the bone disease. But the inverse is so as well. So uh, populations in uh, China, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, People don't have milk mustaches. They're not obsessing over how much calcium they're eating. Uh, they eat very little dairy in general. Uh, that's where we see the greatest protection, the lowest uh, risk of suffering a bone fracture. And men and women in their seventh and eighth decade of life have strong, robust bones. They're out, they're active, they're moving around, they're lifting up their grandchildren, they're working in fields and enjoying a healthy life. You know, the, the relationship between uh, just saturated fat consumption and risk of heart disease, hypertension, uh, various cancers and such, uh, cholesterol, uh, the chemical contaminants in milk, all of these things have relationships and, and contribute to risk of a variety of conditions, whether it be neurological disease such as Parkinson's disease or prostate cancer, breast cancer. Uh, coronary artery disease. So when one uh, looks at the totality of what they're being exposed to, whether it be the contaminants or whether it be the bovine growth hormone um, that's causing the IGF-1 levels to rise, or the estrogen that is substantially elevated in these pregnant cows and then expressed in the milk, all of these things are contributing to our total risk of a variety of different health problems. Well, with cheese, we take a lot of the water out, so we concentrate the fat, and many of the chemical contaminants that we're concerned about that are showing up in milk, uh, they bind with fat, and that's where they're kind of sequestered. So uh, if you concentrate more fat, you're gonna concentrate more of these toxic chemicals that we're concerned about exposure to. So that could be an issue with cheese as well. There's absolutely no evidence to support the claim that drinking the milk of a cow is going to protect us from future bone fracture. And in fact, the overwhelming evidence that we have in the scientific literature today says just the opposite, that those who drink it and drink it regularly are at most risk for disease. The reality is, is that we don't need the milk of a cow or any other mammal. We simply need to eat a healthful diet that's centered around plants that support bone health. And we have to make sure that we use our bodies, we use our bones, we stimulate them through regular exercise and build and develop and maintain muscle tone because that keeps us uh, stable and less likely to fall. Of course, we know that falls precipitate fracture in most instances. So the focus really for everyone is to leave the milk myth aside and begin to embrace a healthful diet that's plant strong and that is not loaded up with caffeine and refined sugars and refined flours and the kinds of foods that unfortunately prevail in the Western diet.